Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back and let's go. The 2018 summer split starts right now. And while the teams get ready up on stage, we're going to hit the countdown. We got some cool stuff to show you guys. So follow me. Now, of course, since we have no new teams this season, we decided to switch things up with the studio itself. And so I'm going to be picking up Mark and Jat. We're going to check out the new digs to unveil our brand new State Farm analyst desk. Here he is, my boy. You got a new ride. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. I heard there's a lot more they space. Up, they, what, they upped your salary? Yeah, well, I spent all of it on the scooter. Of course, naturally. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the State Farm Analyst Studio. We've upgraded from a desk. Here you see, of course, the interview area where <laughs> Avali will be yeah. grilling unsuspecting uh, pros, and Jat will, of course, be Stop napping me. in his spare time. Is it comfy? Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to know. And, of course, we've got new technical here. capabilities. Avli, of course, showing our new telestration to bring top-notch analysis. Does this ruin the, the shot if I walk like this? It absolutely ruins okay. the shot, but thank you. And then, of course, our home base. We've got beautiful champion tower uh, team tiles and this huge back wall. And Hey, okay. what's up, guys? How's it going? Oh, I mean, this is beautiful. our space. Welcome okay. to my brand new desk. Seriously, you couldn't yeah. let us have okay. the spotlight mm -hmm. for like mm -hmm. five seconds? This is uh, my space now. The three, of, the three of us spent like two months building this studio, and you got to come in and act like you own it. Well, now that uh, I'm here, uh, you're... might as well have some fun. Now sure. that you're yeah. here, we're just, just going to deal with it, ladies and gentlemen. Well, without further delay, welcome to the NALCS Countdown, where for 30 minutes we shepherd you through the new meta and reason through roster moves until the timer reaches zero. And we jump into Champion Select. I'm James Dash Patterson here by, or here with rather, Mark Zimmerman, Joshua Jatliesman, and that guy. Kobe. Uh, yeah, Kobe. That would be his name. How, how's it going? You guys ready for some craziness? I'm so ready. The new meta and everything that's going on, <laughs> plus the space, plus ramping up the You say new worlds. meta. Define the meta, please. Uh, it's kind of, you know, <laughs> still figuring it out. All right, everyone's there. I wish you the best of luck with that. Now, with the new space also comes the vast possibilities of summer and our new summer split Foldy sheet. Now counting for a new meta. Add in the new faces to the league and multiply that by the number of picks in week one of leagues so far. And we have 14 million possible outcomes. Only one where NA wins worlds. What are the percentages on that? So you're saying there's a chance. There is a, ch there is a chance, Kobe. I'll tell you that much. Mr. Dash, I don't feel so good. Kobe. I don't want to go. Co no, Kobe, it's okay. Oh. No, we got no. What? 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 What, Kobe? Day one, we lose a cast. Kobe! Yes! What do we do? He's gone! Kobe. I didn't want the desk back that bad, and now the shot's all wonky. What, what do Kobe we do? do? We're unbalanced. Oh, my goodness. We're going to have to bring in some reserves for later today. <laughs> now, we're in the end game now, so let's take a look at what our schedule is for today, presented by Jersey Mike Subs. Now, the day starts with a finals rematch between 100 Thieves and Team Liquid, and then TSM and CLG hope to start their split on a high note by taking down their storied rivals. Followed by Clutch Gaming versus C9, where Doublelift and Aphromoo will be joined by Kobe, of course, if he's still around, for the NALCS Lounge on Riot Games 2. Plus, two more games before we close out the day. And if you're looking for a sub above during our games, visit a Jersey Mike's near you and order online at jerseymikes.com. And be sure to check in later in the split for ways to earn in-game rewards like Hextech Chess, Skins, and RP when you order online. I'm going to be eating a lot of sandwiches this split. And Mike's you know? way... <laughs> Definitely my <laughs> way. It's nice addition there, Mark. Thanks. Now, in the spring split, we had only nine returning starters to kick off the franchise era. In summer, we have only nine changes to the starting rosters in week one. A stark contrast. Yeah, and it was even fewer before Cloud9 decided to make changes at the last minute there. But we see with franchising, players signing longer contracts, teams having academy leagues, so the level of available talent outside of your own roster of 10 is a little bit lower. So you need to have a much larger impetus to make a change, which is why I think we have fewer changes coming into this split. So among those changes, you already kind of noted it just a moment ago, the two biggest ones are from two of our playoff teams that seem to be the most surprising, C9 in particular. Yeah, I mean, this is a team that had a number of players on their all-pro position, and then out of nowhere, they dropped Jensen, Sneaky, and Smoothie, three of the best players in the league that we're used to seeing, and they've put in uh, three players from their academy roster. Yeah, it is so crazy. 377 consecutive LCS starts for Sneaky, which will end today with their announced starting roster of having Keith in the AD carry slot or the bot lane carry slot. I mean, so how do you justify this? How do you explain as large a roster move as this? Dash, it's, it's so strange because these guys were second team or third team all LCS in the spring, which was a couple months ago. As you know, Sneaky has started 
all of those games. And the fact that after the news happened, they all kind of tweeted out like benched smiley face, benched XD face. Then Jensen went into a little bit more detail saying that he said it wasn't due to toxicity or poor individual performance and they wanted to shake things up. But it's a huge move with the reputation these guys have. And I still can't quite believe it with kind of the meaning that was happening on Twitter if it really is a move to have potentially Golden Glue Keith and Zazel as the main C9 guys. I mean, a year ago, you would never assume those those kinds of names are going ago. to replace yeah. these names yeah. here on Cloud9. Uh, beyond that, let's jump over to TSM, who, again, continued struggles in the jungle, if you will, and that Mike Young now supposedly sharing time with Greg. Greg, of course, the starter. Yeah, and this was a, another kind of late season announcement in terms of that they would be splitting time, but then we saw Mike Young in the Academy League for both games uh, in earlier this week, which makes you think, of course, Greg gonna be starting here. And uh, even then, like another kind of example of like these kind of trolley tweets indicating mm -hmm. uh, maybe something else behind the scenes. A while ago, Spen spam tweeted something, better jungler wins, and then a yep. couple weeks later, you're swapping your jungler up. It looked like there were some significant problems with Mike Young, who the, previously they had put all their support behind. Of course, with the new players comes a new version of League of Legends. And while we would love to talk about every change that we've seen, we've only got about 12, 13 minutes to go before game one. So let's get some spark notes going into today's games. First thing you have to point out, of course, is what's going on in the bot lanes. No longer 80 carries, it's bot lane carries. And there's still a lot of marksmen, especially things that you're seeing at MSI, Ezreal and Kaisa still up there, some Zaya, Ash and stuff, Lucian getting those big changes with some of the itemization as well. But when those A tiers are gone, anything else seems like it's viable. Yeah, this is for patch 811 as well. So basically one week of LCS, LCK, LPL, and EU LCS play has given us this much diversity. Now, most of these picks that you see on that screen are one game, two games because it feels like so many of these teams have reached their own conclusions or maybe even just hypothesis that they want to try and test out that this is actually how you approach the bottom lane but that is more than i have ever seen by far for that position that's not bot and support that's literally just the bot carry position with 27 unique picks in week one and the position thing is important because a lot of those things can be played elsewhere as well so when you're going through the draft phase and the game's coming up do not assume anything pretty yeah. much uh, you know vlag can be played in three positions aurelia can be played in three positions so it's super super flexible of course we we even saw in other regions though along with this the idea that well if champions from Previously, other lanes or roles are going to move into the bot carry position. Right. Should other players be piloting those champions as opposed to the traditional bot carry? Yeah, there's an LPL team called Snake that actually subbed out their traditional marksman player, subbed in their substitute support player, and ran double melee bot both games in a series to a lot of success. So they're the only team that did that. I don't think that's going to be a very common strategy, but at least it's a possibility and it's the direction some teams are going. Yeah, maybe the substitution will be less frequent, but other players are still getting flexed around based off champion now. So yeah. we saw Faker play Darius in the bot lane uh, in Academy. They had their uh, bot laner playing the Mordekaiser mid. So people are moving all over yeah. to accommodate the picks. That, of course, brings us to the other strat that we've been seeing a lot of, this kind of gold funneling relationship between oh, yeah. mid laners typically and the junglers as well. And this is uh, the other kind of crazy strat that's starting to emerge. Basically, you take a very strong scaling jungler, you give them the mid farm and the jungle farm to try and catapult them ahead, making a super Yi, super Kaisa, yeah. some of these uh, champions that scale very well with gold. Yeah, and I feel like it's actually a bit of an extension of what we saw at MSI with RNG and Uzi, where they were giving him so much farm in the mid game. It just happens at the start of the game. So right. they don't even joke about having, uh, it's just a second support on the Well, now I want to see Uzi start getting farm from two lanes in a jungle. Look, Kaisa jungle Uzi <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. But looking at the pool of players that we have in front of us from this league in particular, what are you excited about most here to see played today? I think it has to be Wild Turtle. This is a guy who has played other positions professionally. He's always been known as being super aggro, flashing in on Kalista and things like that. And now the meta allows him to play Yasuo and Vladimir and these other champions that have a lot more agency than marksmen are tending, used to having, as well as the fact that Lucian, Kaisa, and Ezreal are the marksmen that are viable right now. All of that screams Wild Turtle meta. Yeah, I mean, I remember playing with him on Yasuo. Yeah. We were victorious. We won it under 20 minutes. Yeah, he's already played it this year. So he's a, he's a step in front of the rest of the league right now. Yeah, and I'm also really excited to see Huni because he has always been one to push the envelope, even when there wasn't much envelope to push. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and now it feels mm. like things are wide open, even though most people haven't experimented that much with the top one. We've seen Aatrox emerge as a new pick, but for the most part, it's tanks or bruisers. I wonder if Echo Fox is going to allow Huni to move elsewhere, to funnel farm, to play very strange champions, because if anyone is going to do it, it's going to be Huni and Echo Fox. All right, well, focusing in on the first match, probably sounds ready to enter the wild world of this split.
So I definitely hate being the first ones on a new patch in our region for sure. I feel a little bit more comfortable in the fact that I think no region knows what's going on right now. So that gives me like a little bit of like peace of mind where it's like my confusion right now. It's like met with every other team's confusion. So it's not as much panic as usual, even though this is a gigantic change on this patch. This is definitely a new game with the new patch. So I'm ready to beat Liquid this time. I mean, coaches are typically pushed into the spotlight when it comes to meta shifts. And unfortunately for both Kane and probably they're the first two to hit the stage and time to decipher this meta. Yeah, and you hear him there saying he doesn't like being the first time on a new mm. patch. But at this point, like, everything is so broken open and everyone seems to have their own understanding of the meta. It doesn't feel like you're going to show something that other people haven't seen yet. Uh, yeah. Or if, you, if they haven't seen it yet, it's because no one else is doing it. And I think it is an opportunity to really show your superiority and your ability to analyze a non-standard game. This is mm. no longer a form of mimicry. It's a form of creation by yourself. And another thing that it tests is teams' relationships with each other and levels of authority. Because when there is no game to point to, to say, oh yeah, very clearly, Ezreal is a top 380 carry. You got one guy saying Brand's great, the other guy says you should play Jace. How do you come to an agreement, and how are you okay with the decision? So the healthier teams with the better structures are going to succeed more in this environment. And I have a question for you. How do you analyze that? We'll yeah. get to that later yeah. today. Now, for both these teams last split, they heavily relied on their bot lane. Again, we spoke to Double Lift earlier on the stage. And, of course, you got Cody Sun and Aframu on the flip side of the matchup. Mm -hmm. well, how do you expect this to play out today? Right. Well, we know Team Liquid are the defending champions, but we also know they're not going to play the same team comps they were playing when they won the spring split championship. I still think that this team team needs to play through Doublelift in some way. He is their leader in and out of game. I think even if you're playing different champions, you can still bring bot lane as a carry matchup. Doublelift has been praying pro for seven years before AD carry and support were the standard, and he's tweeted out in support of this change that could maybe refresh him. So I want to see how they approach this. The flip side, 100 Thieves also played through their bot lane a lot, but it was Cody Sun more in mid to late game situations yeah. where Afro and Meteos would get a bunch of kills around him. He would get the gold from it, and then he would carry late game. You don't reach late game anymore in this meta, or so it seems. So they'll have to find a new way to integrate him into this. Uh, and their loss, and their loss to uh, Team Liquid in the finals, they did get a lot of kills in the early game. So maybe despite the fact that Cody Sun's their main carry threat, they do seem to have the ability to find kills in the early game and hopefully snowball. Yeah, and anecdotally, even though we've seen 27 unique picks in the bottom lane carry role, most picks have been Lucian and Kaiza and Ezreal. And I think the majority actually of games are still with some of those non-crit scaling marksman bottom lane. So you don't have to change if you don't want to. Marksmen can win. In yes. fact, they still Absolutely. do yes. win. Most now, of the time. <laughs> now, Avali caught up with Team Liquid's coach to discuss how his team will approach their first game. Thanks, guys. Just got finished speaking with Coach Kane about what he thinks we're going to be seeing in professional play. He said that because the meta is so difficult to predict right now, he has no idea. But he's feeling very confident with Team Liquid's preparation, especially since they just came back from MSI and now have that international experience. He said that the main focus for this split is going to be figuring out how to work with these new champions and new team compositions during all of these team fights. And as for their game against 100 Thieves, he had one message for Prawley. Sorry, but we're going to win. Back to you guys. Well, with 540 left on the clock before champion select, I want to get some win conditions up on the board. I have a feeling this one will be tough for you guys. But starting with Team Liquid, Mark, what do you got for me? Uh, understand the meta real good. That's, uh, <laughs> no, do uh, better. Yeah, do better. <laughs> do better. <laughs> uh, but for them specifically, like it's understanding the meta for yourself because we're highlighting the fact mm -hmm. that you can do different things uh, based off what your team strengths are. And there are a lot of fighters in the top lane, but we know that, you know, impacts at his best when he's not on those. Singe is super meta. You have Orin super meta. Those are two of his best champions. Try and get him on a tank and then find something for double lift. If it is the Yasuo and the more aggressive stuff, because he's been practicing that a lot, I know we've seen it in his solo queue information, maybe that's what you go for. And if not, you know, like he plays a nasty Lucian. You can just stick with the marksman for him. Right. So understand what works best for their team. And I believe it will be tank top, aggressive bot lane, and hopefully some kind of uh, more supportive mid. Jat, what's the response? Yeah, well, I still think uh, if these teams are sticking to their scrim pockets with some discipline, they haven't scrimmed each other. So they shouldn't actually know which direction these teams have gone. Uh, therefore, if I'm probably in this draft, phase for 100 Thieves, I'm delaying my support and my bot lane carry pick as long as possible in order to try and get a counter pick in that lane. I don't care as much about if Impact can get ahead in top lane or if Pobuff can get ahead in mid because they have... 
Shane Blickford hasn't carried through those positions. You get a counterpick bot lane, whatever it is in either position, just so you can control that and get double to the game, I think is the most important thing for 100 Thieves in this game. When you look at both of these teams, does either team have a jungler that speaks to you as being able to pilot, let's say, the Yi in that kind of super Yi composition? You know, Smithy has made his name recently a lot with things like Sejuani and Gragas and stuff like that, but he also has a really amazing Kindred, Graves, and Ezreal. Even at Worlds last round of Mortals, he was playing those. So I think he has the tendencies, if needed, to play the carry-centric style. It's just if Team Liquid want to opt the resources into him. All right, well, this spring split is behind us, and so are the prediction records. And with a clean slate, let's pull up your predictions for the day. Now, TL got tested on the international got stage, Mark. but now I'm going to test the two of you. We are different. Some opponents Whoa. <laughs> overseas. You see them flown up here. Our guests will reveal so, those to you in guests? just a moment. The okay. guests are getting revealed. All right. e either way, we have four different picks. We're getting with Echo Fox versus FlyQuest. Yeah. We'll wow. get back to this graphic, but real quick, I want to throw it to a video as our guests are a few of the pro players from the LPL. Uh, C九对C九战队的话 저번에 좀안 좋았다고 들어가지고 오틱 게임이 이기지 않을까? 그렇게 될것 같습니다. Uzi, Bang, and Ming weighing in with their predictions I'm overseas. I'm who they got for these yeah, predictions. some A-list talent. Yeah. Get them up here. Get Jad out. Now, that said, I do I want to give you guys the opportunity to return to your discussion between you, between the two of you on your predictions because there were quite a few yeah. differences. I mean, so it's a lot of speculation right now, not only just mm -hmm. because, hey, start of a new split, but, like, what are these teams all playing? Uh, so I think I agree. TL versus 100 Thieves would have been one probably pretty likely to split anyways. Uh, but I do think that... Based off how much Doublelift has tweeted, he's been loving the mm -hmm. meta and stuff like that. True. I expect that means their scrims have been going well. Interesting I, one for me, Jad, is the fact that you predicted C9 even in the face of that roster swap. So did our pro players from the LPL. They didn't even know. I, they're not here for me to question. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, because I have enough trust in Jack and Reaper that they wouldn't make this choice if they didn't think it was going to give them some level of success. And apparently, I was the number one clutch hater last year, so I'm just going to continue that trend. <laughs> yeah, that seemed to work out well. <laughs> yeah, for you. Exactly. it was great. I mean, it o the only game in which you guys agree is that Echo Fox game sitting in the fourth position of the day. Uh, why is it that the two of you index towards them more than anyone else? I think it was the only position with a clear mismatch at how yeah. the seeding ended last split, uh, as well as the fact that, you know, Echo Fox has Dardock. If they're going for a crazy jungle style, they have Huni. Alltech and Adrian can play something like Ezreal Morgana or Ezreal Brahma, maybe be fine. Yeah, and across the board, I actually did preseason power rankings. We did them on the dive. You want to reveal week. those? Do you have them? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't, I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, all of my picks actually correspond to those power rankings that I did. Okay. Most matchups were like two versus three or nine versus ten, so it's a very volatile day. All right, well, there you have it. Before we get to that game four, we got to get through games one through three. So to toss it out to the casters, let's get into the summer split. Thank you very much, Dash. Welcome, everyone, to the start of the 2018 Summer Split. My name is David Freak Turley, and my meta rocking pick coming in today is Isaac Azale Cummings Bentley as a co caster. Well, thank in your you. normal position. First pick? Yeah, absolutely. There you 100%. go. 100% first I'm pick. Happy. There you go. Not even banned just yet. It's beautiful <laughs> stuff right here. 8.11 is the patch of the day. If you are watching the NALCS countdown, we do expect a fair bit of non-typical bot lane picks, maybe a little bit of a dash of a Super Yi or Super Karthus in the mid or jungle position. It's going to be a lot of fun as we get ourselves into Champion Select to see the defending champions, Team Liquid. We'll start off with a win against the runners-up 100 Thieves. Let's go. It's going to be a good one. I'm so excited to see what we are going to get from these teams. Because yes, we have seen LCK. Yes, we have seen the EU LCS and the LPL and these leagues around the world. But we don't know what the interpretation 
of the meta has been in the NALCS, and it has been very different in between these leagues. When you look at the LCK, you know, the prevalence of these uh, non-standard, non-marksman bottom lanes is much higher than that of, say, the LPL, where they're yep. running still almost exclusively marksmen and still consider that to be the strongest. And, you know, I'm of the opinion that both strategies can work, depending mm -hmm. upon which you are better at. You know, there are still some very, very strong marksmen. Lucian, I think, is kind of the king in the bot lane, but yeah. you still have Ezreal, Draven, I think Kog'Ma, Ash, you know, even Averis and things Kaisa, like this. Kaisa, uh, that can be very powerful. So, gonna be pretty excited to see uh, what these guys are gonna go with. You know, Doublelift definitely strikes me as someone who would be wanting to stick more to marksmen. He's literally sure. never played a non-marksman uh, in his career as uh, that bot lane position. Right, yeah. But this. If there was a time to kind of buck that trend, this would be it. This would be it. So here we go. First pick for Team Liquid. What do they think not only is most important for them, but what read do they have of what 100 Thieves wants to draft? Because if, of course, the pick isn't contested, you can wait a little while to pick that one up. Rakan, the first hover, and Ole almost definitely, that is likely to not be a flex, Rakan, the first one of the game. And Zyra Khan is, is still fairly popular as well. Another marksman that I didn't actually answer, but a lot of the picks that have been super high priority are things like Aurelia because they can go in multiple lanes. Even, you know, even the jungle basically can be played almost every role. Camille has been hugely popular as a flex pick there too. Uh, we have been seeing in a lot of things like Vladimir and Rise and some of the other regions going bot lane, going top lane, playing mid as well. So uh, flex picks have been one of the most important things on this new patch because yeah. it makes it so difficult to really answer your opponent's picks in the drafts. You know, if there's a, a Darius and a Rise and a Vladimir and whatever, you don't really know where everything is going. So it right, can yeah. make it more difficult to actually pick the proper matchups. Absolutely. And and just to set expectations during this champs, like about half of all games so far in Pro have been standard versus standard, mm -hmm. roughly to that degree right here. So. Uh, if we just see, you know, Double Lift and Cody Sun bring out Ash and Varus, and you've got pretty much normal tanks everywhere else, that is, again, about half of all games. And yep. I think we'll see something come out throughout the day. But again, it's it's up to these teams practicing in secret, hiding the straps for one another, and then hoping they come out with the right strategy on day one. Exactly. I mean, this could very well be a Trundle jungle here for Meteos. That's my assumption there. Uh, it could just be Aurelia top or mid, you know, which was a more traditional flicks pick for this champion. Ryu or Someday definitely uh, could both be playing that. But it also could go straight bot to Cody Sun. We could see that mix up. And Camille, another very, very powerful uh, flex pick, as I was talking about. Smithy could certainly be piloting that. You can see that in the bottom lane. You can see that in the top lane. And Zyra Khan will be the lock yep. for TL. So will be a standard bottom lane tried and true here for double and OLA, at least for game number one. It will. And of course, we have seen even over in Korea a, a super Camille strategy mm -hmm. where there was a supportive mid. I think it was Braum played alongside Camille and yep. Camille jungle got all the farm, helped take over the game. That was actually counterfeit to a Master Yi. But these sorts of flexes are still available for Team Liquid. We'll have to wait and see, of course, as they do have a pretty standard bot lane. And now with 100 Thieves, that could be Aurelia mid Vladimir top, or it could be Aurelia or Vladimir in the bottom lane. And we'll wait to see what 100 Thieves thinks is optimal. Yeah, 100 Thieves is, is striking me much more like they are going to go for those atypical bot lanes, like they are going to kind of do this. We've been seeing a ton of Vladimir bot in pro play, actually more Vladimir bot than really in the, the standard solo lanes. And you know, Aurelia could be going a number of different places here. You know, definitely could be in the solo lane, could be bot as well. Um, but it's looking like TL, I think, especially with their style of play, it makes more sense for them to play relatively standard. I am yep. expecting Impact to still be on a tank. You could theoretically put Pobelter on a support mid and then have that power farming Camille, or he could just be on a Zoe or something along those lines and play it uh, quite, quite standard. Right, and Impact could be the Camille. We haven't seen any jungler mid pick yet. Very there true. is a lot to go through. And of course, that's hard for 100 Thieves. They're banning Lulu, not even knowing if that's a viable champion for Team Liquid right now, but something they've even practiced, but it is off the table here. Alistair banned away from Aphromoo. Of course, that Trundle could go support, but mm -hmm. wait to be seeing what this one is about. And and yeah, just to kind of talk again about the topic of are the teams going to play non-standard or not, because, you know, playing typical marksman, typical mage is a completely viable strategy. It's not that these teams didn't try, it's that they thought, yeah, you know, playing Zyra Khan is our best first foot forward. Yeah, exactly. And, and I do think that the win rates have shown that marksman is a, is a totally viable way to play this meta still. Uh, a lot of teams have been very, very successful uh, playing almost exclusively Marksmen. You know, some of the teams are having success playing the non-standard lanes. Uh, others, you know, notably SKT, a lot of people are seeing they're trying all this crazy stuff. None of it is working for them. So it is yeah. not the only way to play. A lot of the meta takes getting taken off the table, though. Uh, Orn and Singe both gone for impact, could push him down a little bit. Uh, another thing that we have seen kind of rising up in, in the top lane that wasn't really talked about much on the desk is Darius. Darius has become yeah. much more popular in the top lane and Impact, as a guy who loves to blind pick tanks, someday as a guy who has actually played Darius, Darius. competitive, yeah. 
Uh, that is certainly an option there. Uh, Leona as the pick, and we, we still don't know. This still could just be solo lane, Aurelia, Vlad, jungle, Trundle, Leona plus X bot lane. Um, but Leona bot does make me feel like we are going to have a Leona, Aurelia, or a Leona, Vladimir. That is kind of more my assumption. Uh, right. Those are very strong all-in lanes. Uh, also, the fact that, you know, Cody Sun is actually sitting on Ghost leads me to believe that he might be the one, you know, perhaps playing the Vladimir there. Mm -hmm. uh, could be pretty interesting, but Galio could be mid, could be top. Uh, is going to pair really well for the Camille, whether that goes jungle or top. We know that the ultimatum plus grand entrance combo there, heroic entrance rather, uh, is yeah. a very, very powerful combo. And Ooh. this could be blind pick Aatrox top, which uh, is gaining a lot of popularity. Uh, across the world, really considered a very good matchup into pretty much all tanks. It's yep. a very, very good counter pick into GP. Um, has has a lot of really, really strong matchups, honestly. And okay, let's go. Game number one of the summer split and alphabetical champion number one A H Rock in the top lane for Impact. And I want to see what Sunday picks up against it here. There is still a small chance that you see Aatrox jungle. I have seen it a little bit, but mm. definitely expecting it to be Aatrox top, Galio mid, Camille jungle, looking fairly standard for TL. Only real change here from last split would be that Galio. And and Jace, if that gets locked in, uh, I have seen... Oh, okay. Renekton. Renek, so it's going to be it's going to be the non-standard bot. Uh, my guess is it's going to be Vladimir plus Leona bot. We'll see how they want to actually swap it around. Uh, there is the possibility to just kind of go different options there, but expecting to be Trundle Jungle. Could, okay, so maybe Aurelia plus the Leona bot. This is very, very interesting. I mean, any one of those three could go any alongside really, Leona yeah. because you know you're facing Zaya Rakan, and if you think you can go for all-in burst damage, then a, an early game fighter like an Aurelia, like Renek, then you can, you can, you know, stun combo that. But if you need Vladimir to be your primary carry, maybe you give him a little bit of an easier lane. I mean, against Gali, of course, that's not too hard, but five seconds to go until lock-ins are guaranteed. Teams can swap up until that 20-second mark. Vladimir in the bottom lane, Aureli mid, and Renekton will be the pick to answer Aatrox top. So this is what I was most expecting. Vladimir plus Leona is a very strong combo. That that makes the most sense with the picks that I was seeing, and Leona you know, did kind of lend itself towards running these sorts of bottom lanes. Uh, someday on the Renekton, definitely a very heavy lane bully can match up well against the Aatrox, but in my experience, Aatrox certainly can take over in later stages, and one of the real strengths of Aatrox is diving with the Bloodwell passive. You essentially have that built-in GA. And when you add a Camille plus Galio, that could really be someday getting picked on in the top lane, trying to snowball impact on this Aatrox and, yeah. and take over through two. And be a crazy split forge. He's going to have solo XP and might have a really good time fighting those one-on-ones later in the game or being a disruptive front line. But it is roughly four melee plus Azaya for Team Liquid and four melee plus Vladimir for 100 Thieves. No marksman here for the red side. The runners up for the North American LCS, and they've got Cody Sun playing an all new champion in their inaugural game of the 2018 summer split. Well, in their second split as a team, a brand new roster made it to finals. A great run by pretty much everyone's considerations, and it's already crazy. Vladimir's got an ancient coin. I think Cody Sun's playing a supportive mid or something. It's definitely possible that he's going to roll swap, but I have also just seen. Uh, Vladimir straight up actually just go coin and, oh, really? and okay. share farm and do some wacky things there. Okay, I've missed um, that then. But uh, yeah, we'll have to find out. I'm still expecting, especially with the cleanse, that it is going to be Ryu mid um, and just kind of this coin bot Vladimir. Um, you know, it's, it's instead of something like a Doran shield or whatever, and if you're not sure. actually feeling that you are pressured early on, it can give you a little bit of an income boost. I uh, haven't seen it a lot, but I have seen it a little. And this is, this is going to be a, a very exciting first game. You know, yeah. One of the things I will say is that when you are running a marksman uh, into these kind of atypical bot lanes, things like the Vladimir and, and Leona, if the Vladimir and Leona start to really fall behind, it can be much more difficult for them to actually come, come back into the game because you start to get pushed in, you start to get poked out. It can be difficult to actually keep up and farm. And, uh, you know, if you can't all in with these sorts of comps, like this is, this is, I mean, it's not, Vladimir is not a melee champion, but it's four melees and essentially, you know, another diver. Yeah. Uh, you have to be able to win fights, right? The wave clear is not good. It's not safe on 100 Thieves. So that makes the early game so much more important. And when you're playing a competition like this and you fall behind, uh, there is very little fallback pattern besides just grouping and fighting and hope you win. So early game important for 100 Thieves. That is something we've definitely noticed watching pro play so far this year. Wave clear, much weaker. Inhibitor and Nexus turrets more fragile. Baron Nasher deals a lot less damage to champions, making it easier to take in a lot of cases. If you get behind these games, can end sometimes very quickly. 
Gotta watch for this early game pathing. Meteos, of course, we've got the new buffed up Scuttle Crabs as well with a lot more XP and gold, roughly equivalent to a red or blue buff kill. And looks like neither one's gonna be contested as the Camille's going to the one on the top side of the map. And that's something Olay is gonna have to actually be very careful about. Really playing against Vladimir in the early stages, almost all of his, his kind of threat as we're gonna see them go in. Yeah, pretty good damage there. He's always gonna die right away! Level one double if an Ole get a kill already. I mean, that is a squishy Vladimir. He did not start the door and shield, so he has no HP from his starting item there. No defensive yep. stats whatsoever. They do not back off at level two. Combo is landed and he's just gone. Cody just didn't flash the knockup, saving it for the next one, maybe, but that's normally double his 14. This one, now to watch as the mid lane fight comes in and Liquid look angry. That's Ryu down very low in health already. Starting where they left off in the finals, a really yeah. good couple early minutes here for TL. And as I said, it can be so difficult, you know, as these lanes, if you do fall behind. I mean, that's first blood to the bottom lane, straight on to double lift on this marksman. And here it is one more time, just not actually expecting perhaps this all in. There's level two. They needed to, to know that this was coming. The root is landed. And that is just a, a straight up dead Cody son. Yeah. You need to either flash the root, flash the engage, or as you have to in almost every other aggressive matchup, when they're gonna get level two and you're not, you back off. Like yeah. that, that is, you know, bot lane standard. Uh, so to me, that is just a, a straight up mistake and something that is not about playing Vladimir. That is just about playing bot lane. Uh, you can see the last time we saw Aatrox a good four and a half years ago. And he is back, ready to go, and just in time for his rework, of course, so. He's been powering up. Yep, he's been getting better, and here we go to the top lane. Fight a nice chain stun comes through, but also fight in the bottom side. This could be double if Cody Sun grabs that kill. A nice gank coming through for Medios, making that one happen as someday it would walk away with his flash burn. Yeah, nicely done there for Medios, getting down to the bottom side of the map. And remember, this is double lift with TP. He does not have a heal to perhaps you know, get him out of that situation. He will not list farm because he can TP back, but that was a critical gank for Medios to pull off because it gets Cody Sun back to a stage where he can be relevant in this lane, where he picks up a kill, he picks up some gold, and his next base, he'll be able to get something. I'm gonna shove this wave in right now. Double throw, able to get that pickaxe recall thanks to the first blood he got earlier, so he's pretty okay sitting in lane for a little while. Pobelter, level five, looks to make sure there's no early trundle solo on the ocean break. We've seen that happen before, but with the botlane having priority, nice move there. Watch this fight again, Medios right behind him. Yeah, this is just really well done for Medios. He's actually saving the pillar until after the flash is expended, and that is just really well done, knowing that Double will have to flash, locks him in after the summoner is used, yeah. uh, guaranteeing that kill and just a good job there from Medios, getting this bot lane back into it. Even a nice play by Cody Sun, he actually ghosted to get in melee range for Sanguine Pool to get more slows going once he got out of the pillar. So the three of them all put in their crowd control. Again, I think the kill went to the right person with the Cody Sun and Vladimir having it. We've got ourselves a still 500 gold difference in this game as Impact walks by a ward looking near mid. Yeah, and so far, Smithy you know, did try to gank top, you know, at the same time, obviously wasn't able to actually uh, convert on that kill, but you know, I, I tend to think that Aatrox can outscale this Renekton in the 1v1, so it's going to be more about like, can Impact actually survive, can he farm up and, and really be successful later, and we have to watch a lot for Smithy and Pobelter 6, because that is when you really can see this three-man squad set up plays very well, because Aatrox stacks up his passive, he has the blood well, he takes aggro, and you dive onto that Renekton. You'll see, of course, he's not yet level 6, so the tank stats aren't there. Mm -hmm. The ultimate, of course, a pretty important survival tool for that champion. Level fours across the board down this bottom lane as Cody Sun and Double Star are splitting farm pretty closely. Only a five farm difference. Talk about some of the mechanics of the coin, even though, of course, it can give you mana regen. Not the best thing on Vlad. The fact that it gives move speed could be a pretty big deal as well. Yeah. And we'll see as his build progresses. Yeah, and I mean, just, just from his coin, he's actually earned 126 gold already, right? So it is just kind of like a greedier yeah. start. Like, I see it, Vladimir starting coin, somewhat akin to an AD carry starting cult, right? It's something where he obviously wasn't expecting to really be under pressure and die. That went wrong, but... Yeah, uh, sure, you know, happens. That, that's kind of the investment or the bet that he was perhaps making. It's also interesting to know that Double Lift is going lethal tempo, which is something that we didn't really used to see very much on Zaya. So uh, this, this is something that, like, has been buffed a number of times over the last couple of patches and you know, is, I would say, extremely strong you know, in the mid and kind of later game stages. And again, if you don't need Fleet Footwork, which has been nerfed a few times to actually get through the laning phase, then hey, it, it can really up your DPS later on. Yeah, it's definitely a very good team fight damage sword there. It's nice for Zyve because you can use your Qs and things to like trigger the in combat mechanism and then pull up with auto attacks afterwards. Someday you can see running away as Impact pushes him out. Level six on both these top laners and 
about equal farm here. And pretty much any time Impact gets his actual like passive active when he has that full blood well, Someday has to just back off and respect that. Ooh, this is going to be dangerous. Trundle's right in front of him. The pillar not going to come in in time to stop the Q over, but he's still running for his life. He's got Flash. He's going to get over the wall and the chase in for Someday. And his Blast comes back out. Yeah, has to use his Flash. Will get out of there, though. But yeah, all the bonus stats you actually get when that Bloodwell is, is fully active, you get a lot of extra attack speed there, uh, and you do become sort of pretty powerful with, with that actual uh, passive active. Plus, you obviously have a GA built in as well. Uh, it is looking like he's going to be rushing towards the Titanic. Uh, this is something that people have been doing pretty commonly. The build I've been seeing most on the Aatrox is actually a Titanic rush into a Rage Blade. Uh, there are some different options you can go from there. If you want to go more for the healing power, people are going to play the Rune King. You can split off and go into Black Cleaver and these sorts of things. So uh, definitely some options, but you know, a new pick in the top lane and one that has really been doing well uh, across the pro scene. Absolutely the case here, and Impact, of course, notably known for being best on tanks. If you can actually survive and do well on fighters, that is a good look for Team Liquid. It's something that we had seen fans malign them for. And oh, Lay takes the Grom. <laughs> Thank uh, you very much. It doesn't always mean the most in the grand scheme of things, but it feels so bad. And Meteos <laughs> actually, I think he would have got six off that. So that's actually a big deal if they could force a fight right now, uh, because this is a Getting trundle without him. his ultimate. And a control word means actually a vision deficit. Yeah, Meteos is smiteless for a few more seconds. Now the blue resets. This could even be a, st a buff steal. Bolter has the ultimate available. Not in range just yet, but could try to join. And Smithy is, yeah, Smithy is trying to wait for Pobelter to get in range here, I think, before he wanted to make any plays. And Pobelter has actually opened up a pretty big lead in the mid lane. And once he picks up all this farm, it's over 20 CS ahead here uh, for Pobelter in that yeah. 1v1. And Galio is going to be problematic for the 100 Thieves team. You essentially have five men trying to dive in, and then a Galio to answer that. And Ryu roaming top. Might only need to in this time. They're gonna chain together some of the CC. Here comes the Galio over on the wrong side of the wall, though. The bear's still coming across for him by the top, and now he's gonna be able to revive. That's a pretty important timer now. Two versus two continues. A big stun. The damage coming across. That's the kill answered. Back 100 Thieves on the board of their second. Yeah, nice roam up there from Ryu. Was answered by Pobelter, but kind of an awkward fight because Impact was A, already low, B, didn't have his flash, and then it looked like the Galio ultimate, you know, he's actually separated from him because of where that landed in. So a bit of an awkward fight here for TL, and this is Impact flashless. Ryu trying to make the punish. Actually does land the stun there from Sunday, uh, kind of guaranteeing the next one. And then you'll see the Galio landing over the wall, not immediately able to help, has to expend his flash, has to get in there. Thankfully for Impact, he did actually get that pass at the proc, but they didn't have enough damage left in the tank to, to actually turn that one around. And at that point, Poelter out of cooldowns, couldn't put any more damage towards the Irelia, an easy walk away for Ryu. This means this game is only 500 apart. Double Lift has opened up a farm lead in the bottom lane. He's going towards what I'm going to guess to be a Storm Razor. I think it's the only VF Sword pickaxe yeah. item that I can rack my brain around, but that'll be a quick early power spike for him. Yeah, going to be going early for that Storm Razor. I'll be curious to see if he decides to get an early Executioner's or anything like that to help deal yeah. with the Vladimir. The Trundle also has quite a bit of healing. You know, even uh, the Q resets for Aurelia is quite a bit of healing. You know, Renekton Renekton. Q yeah. healing, so there's a lot in there. And I do think healing a debuff could be a pretty worthwhile investment. Uh, Cody's son here. Wondering if he is going for a straight death cap rush or if it is actually I can't even think of the uh, name because no one buys it, but the one oh, no, no, no. has all the charges. Yeah, no, I knew I actually started seeing it a lot on the Vladimir pickups when Shirelia's got changed to cost more, they started going over towards uh, a spellbinder's orb. Spellbinder. Spellbinder's orb, it's a bunch of ability power, it's a bunch of movement speed. Probably the rush. And an active move speed. It's basically yeah, new Shirelia's, but it does the same things for Vladimir. Uh, I, that's my expectation here. I don't yeah. think Death Cap Rush is mathematically that great. Yeah, I don't think so either. And they're going to try to return to the top side here for Impact. And he's just going to get pushed off. I mean, he can't actually approach this. Yeah, he's sitting around. He the can see all gone. of them. The and it's going to be, there. yep. First turret should be going to 100 Thieves if it doesn't get stopped too much. Nope, that is going over. And it will give local gold to Meteos. If it doesn't die too fast, it actually gets aggroed back. And okay, someday's going to walk over. Take the swipe, and there we go. 650 gold, top lane advantage someday, and that was just in time as the bot lane now goes to the engage. A chain stun coming down, and Ole had no chance to do anything. Ole just got deleted there, but Smithy roaming down to the bottom side, and that was so critical to get the top lane turret because the bottom lane here for TL was so very close to knocking down their own. Really nice Rift Herald take from Meteos. It does actually pay pretty big dividends, and then you see that burst combo really paying off in the bottom side. Like when you look at the Thunder Lord's proc there, uh, on top of Aftershock damage coming out, the Ignite coming through, the ultimate of Powered Q, like there's a tremendous amount of burst down on Olay, and 
Uh, we're going to see him go a bit more of a tanky build to try to deal with that, looking like he's moving towards an Aegis, perhaps an early Locket. Here it is one more time from LA, but stun into the ultimate. The ultimate from Leona, uh, the actual Thunderlord proc coming out there, plus the Aftershock damage. Like, that is a lot of burst all at once, and yeah. he's going to have to tank up a bit. You can see the double is respecting that also. Rushing an early QSS does not want to be a victim of the same thing. Yeah, that's actually pretty threatening right there. He's going to deal with a lot of chain crowd control, and of course, Alfred did not have to burn even Flash to make that happen, so he can go for a Flash Q to pretty much guarantee a combo if he's ever in that range. Rebuff going to go over to expand his game. Now 1,000 lead, 400 thieves! Top lane, though, is where a lot of that gold is right now. Individually, he's up a sizable amount because of first turret. 800 right there onto that one. Bot lane turret, though, likely to fall to double up an Ole as they come down with the mini wave. Yeah, they will knock down this turret. The Galio even threatening the roam. Smithy in the area there as well. Uh, Smithy has been farming up pretty heavily and you know, hasn't really been able to get involved in too much just yet, though. Really one kind of gank around the top side that didn't pan out. One threaten on the blue buff that didn't pan out. But I want to start using a uh, seeing TL use uh, this Camille ultimate plus the Galio ultimate. That is such a core component of their composition, especially with the Rakan backing that up. Like, you have such powerful engage that you want to be pulling the trigger on that pretty much every time it's up and trying to look for picks, trying to look for kills in these pickoffs. See if they can find that, of course, one of the nerfs to Galio over the last several months was a heavily increased cooldown on the ultimate. Of course, it is available right now. He's got the access to use the tools, but. If 100 Thieves can force bad engages, it's kind of off the map for a long time every once in a while. No CDR yet in the build. You can see him going for Rod of Ages first, so it is going to be that full extended cooldown of the time being. It's still only level 10 on this Galio. 100 Thieves collecting around this bottom river right now. Control Ward in there as well means they can start going for this Mountain Drake potentially. Also going to be interesting to see where Poe Belter actually goes with his build from here. You know, last time we kind of saw a Galio in competitive play, it was mostly full AP that people were going. But I tend to think that in a game like this, you already have enough damage. You have Aatrox, Camille, you have the Zaya. All you need to do is survive and peel. And for that, maybe a tanky CDR build would make more sense. It could be right here as the Drake is going down to about 1500 HP. Oh, they goes in. The team's going for the Ard engage. Can this fight work well? Galio's on top, but all giant top of the dragon goes over to 100 Thieves. Now, Sony's in the front line. First kill comes over to Impact. That's a one for zero for Team Liquid. Now, the re engage as Impact runs away. He can revive if he needs to, but the Aurelia kill in the mid lane is a one for one. So, a 4v4 in the team, but X50 far away from his team, far from the base, still being chased down. Can the Trundle do it someday? Well, Exactly finds his first kill of the game and the retreat now for Team Liquid. They lost an extra one in the fight, and the Drake's still at over 100 Thieves. Advantage of the red team. And yeah, nicely done there by 100 Thieves. The TPs come in. They are able to come out on top. And you know, the, the engage was not really that well timed out for TL. It didn't feel like they had the damage in place to actually follow up on that Recon ultimate coming through. And Double is still sitting on his ult. They're actually looking for a pick on Sunday. Find the knockup. He's gotten a power Q. Ignite is on as well. Sunday going to try to find the back line. Deal some damage to Double if he gets close. Forces the ult out, but Devil Lift able to get the kill with the support. Yeah, that early Black Cleaver, and now it's the roam coming down here from 100 Thieves. Ryu is looking. He is behind this bottom lane. I think Double Lift stays are numbered. 300 health, no root available. Flash, flash the Q. The slow's gonna be oh! on the stone, gonna land, but there's not any follow through Galio left available. Coming. And here's Galio looking to buy a bit of time, but a quick cleanse gets the early out of the fight. A nice try, a trade of flashes. Ridiculously close there for Double Lift. Nice flash. Barely able to get away from Ryu, who expended both of his summoners to try to pick up that kill on the back end of the fight. And this is a very, very close one. And we do have the Spellbinder actually complete now for Cody Stun, so he's on his first power spike. And here's the fight one more time. We'll see the engage from Olay. He is looking, goes in, but the damage is not there yet. And that's why I feel that this was kind of a mistimed engage. As Double Lift arrives, essentially, you know, the combo has already been expended. That is already down. Aatrox is just joining after all those cooldowns have already been spent. You really want to make sure, you know, with this TL comp, that they are perfectly bursting someone out in that CC chain. And when they don't, these bruisers, these early powerful champions from 100 Thieves are able to find a lot of kills. This fight kind of gets split up, and that's where these compositions, I think, really, really shine, because you have an Aurelia dueling on one side, a Renekton dueling on the other side, and no one really able to kind of focus fire and control them down. Pretty good damage at Amidius. That Trundle has been, of course, pretty good in these sort of scrappier fights where you can siphon a lot off of the galley or someone else. And pretty equal performance from everyone here as now the mid lane pressure is in. Team Liquid have four, and someday not exactly a wave for their crocodile. But with the Taunt in the front line, in fact, now joins all five there. Can't quite find the knockup. A quick charm on a Cody Sun, but now it's a re engage. 
Vladimir wants it. He's got some damage to double up the stun. He's going to land, but a pretty good QSS gets him away without more than a moment's notice and will not be any kills. Not a Captain Jack, but it was Captain Double. It was pretty good. Yeah, maybe it's Lieutenant Jack. Lieutenant Jack. Yeah. Sergeant Jack, perhaps. Sergeant Jack. I don't actually know the ranks very well. How do I? Okay. We're going to we'll go with Sergeant yeah, below we'll Captain. Stand, yeah. yeah, we're good. Either way, he's going to be able to get out of there with a good QSS. But 100 Thieves do defend the turret. And, and this is kind of, a, a lot of people often ask me, you know, in this meta, well, how do these teams, like, like 100 Thieves running, well, how do you take turrets? How do you actually do anything about taking objectives, right? Well, a lot of it is, A, mages actually got buffed, so champions like uh, Vladimir have an AP ratio against turrets, so that does help a lot. You also are playing a lot around forcing fights at objectives. So you go to the dragon, they come, you fight them. You go to the bear, and they come, you fight them. Or you're trying to split push and, and find picks, find dives, these sorts of things, because it's not about a slow controlled siege situation. It's about constantly pushing the pressure and, and really finding these fights where you can get the kills and then take the follow-up objective. Yeah, and really notably, one of the other ways teams were doing this was Banner of Commander. Right now, it's not being started here for 100 Thieves. They don't seem to think they need it, at least in this game. Of course, that one's going away in 8.12 and has already, but that's not the patch we're playing on here. So we'll see how 100 Thieves want to push their lead. They are only up 400 gold. This one is clearly within reach. Double hit to spike up his next items yet, but I believe he's now got combined cost for Storm Razor. And that'll be a bunch of attack damage, some attack speed, and his first auto attack every several seconds will automatically crit. No, he's actually delaying the build, and Azil picked up. So maybe he is going okay. for full crit, and that pickaxe will turn into a later Mercurial Scimitar or something. It's definitely possible, but I, I think in that case, if he does just want to go straight up, say, Shiv into IE, uh, the pickaxe, I think, ends up just being kind of a poor buy because it does really slow down your item completions. I can understand that when he died, you know, if that's how much gold you have and you feel that you need the immediate laning power, then that would be the justification there, but... Uh, it may also be something like, hey, a shiv back into the, the Storm Razor yeah. or whatever. Uh, so we'll find out as he does go on. I do want to quickly point out for those who weren't following the patch notes, Infinity Edge no longer has a pickaxe in it. It's double BF sword, so he is precluded from this being optimal. If he is rushing IE, we'll wait to see what he wants to do. Of course, this is the Wild West basically here in the NALCS. As we once again have one minute until the Drake Hunter Thieves won that last fight 2-1. to one. We'll see if they can find their next road into this game. Yeah, the Zeke's item completion there, pretty big for Olay, uh, linking up with double lift. And you can see Titanic is done now for double or for impact. So that is actually going to be the Titanic into what I'm expecting to be a Rage Blade. That has been kind of the go-to for Aatrox, and that is really where you can start to, to really turn on. On the other side, you see Someday, and I think he's working towards the Essence Reaver Renekton build, mm -hmm. uh, which there was a lot of talk about this a while ago, but if you don't know the interaction, essentially when you Press your ultimate, the next attack gives you attack speed buff, but also every time you use a basic attack, it lowers the cooldown on your basic abilities. So what this allows Renekton to do is actually get a combo where he's using his W stun twice, essentially, in one engagement in quick succession. And now a quick succession onto the support after we're running out of health. He's going to die, only landing a stun for his troubles. 4v5, Vladimir in the back lane, gets some decent damage to the Hemo Plague, but now Galio to re-engage for you. Going to pop his stopwatch for a second, but will still go down. Two for zero, Team Liquid win a fight. And they're going to be able to get access to this Mountain Dragon right off of that. Double is holding onto his ult the whole time. You notice this is a different style of play for him on the Zaya. He is not using the ultimate as aggressively as you normally see because there's so many divers. He knows he needs to hold that as a defensive ability, and TL are playing these fights out very, very well. And the game just gets harder for 100 Thieves if they start to fall behind. So we'll see if they can stabilize. Drake goes down, mid lane outer gonna fall as well. Liquid once again, the pendulum swings back in their favor. The lead, about 1,500. They try to steal away the blue buff Sunday smiteless. Smithy has it, grabs another objective to steal. His Liquid are crusting well into the mid game. That pick from Ole, just so good. Yeah, that was really, really big for TL. And I, I just tend to like TL's composition, like their chances because of their composition in this game, a lot more heavily. Uh, we see Pobelter is gonna be working towards the Zonias, so not full tank, but it is essentially the similar idea, allowing him to buy time in the middle of the fight and, and be there for peeling, pick up a little bit of CDR, uh, for that shorter pool on the ultimate, taunt, etc. as well. Um, but this is this is going to be a tough game, I think, 400 Thieves. Like, yes, there's always opportunities for them to get that really quick pick and, and kill Doublelift instantly, but if you don't have a really fantastic engage, the Rakan plus Galio CC, as you naturally have five men clumping up, becomes so difficult to deal with. And here is the fight one more time. This is on to Aphrom, who is a very, very tanky guy. They take him down. Uh, Olay is able to find a lot of good CC there, and then the Galio ultimate still was saved, kind of used defensively. That just means Medios and Someday could not re-enter the fight. The rest of the members cannot actually come in or they're going to get locked down. 
uh, by that Galio and take it down too. Now Kodusun has paid off his Ancient Coin. He's got the Sight still now and he's going towards the Death Cap. So his Power Spike is soon and he has the money. That'll be still a while to go till that. But at least he can play the Vision game with his squad. That could be useful up against Team Liquid. Yeah. I mean, it's a rapid fire first for double lift. I think this makes sense again along the lines of how he's playing the game. You know, getting the extra range allows you to kind of more safely play some of the fights, get some hits in here and there, uh, have the extra safety. And, and and he is playing it very defensively, right? He's yep. always holding on to his ultimate to use defensively. He wants to stay on the outside of the fight and, and wait until these guys have no more cooldowns before him. Speaking of playful with cooldowns, that SMG you called out is now done for some days. So I think a very good Renekton fight is going to be pretty incredible. He'll be yeah. one to watch for, absolutely. Someday one of the higher profile pickups of the last year or so in the North American LCS. We'll see if you can find something really good to have happen here. And I'd honestly say this is the strongest point of the game for Renekton. Yeah. I mean, you, could, you could argue that he's still very, very powerful on three items, maybe with a Titanic Hydra, but I would say this is as, as good as it gets for Sunday. He is very high level. The Rage Blade has not been completed for his lane opponent impact. So if they could find a team fight now around the Triforce for Aurelia, the two item power spike here for Sunday, Death Cap coming in for Cody Sun, and these sorts of things, like that is really going to be their best shot at having a really strong team fight uh, and kind of taking down the game because as it scales Look further and further Belter. in, it gets tough. He does have flash though, so the pillar comes in. He's not going to burn that just yet. He's going to zone us the ultimate. And here comes the rest of the team though. This is a bit of a 2v4 as the rest of the team comes across. A slow, a knock up. Here comes the rest of the squad as Xpinty joins in. There's the jump in for Galios while they found the taunt. And they're going to get that isolated kill. One comes down as Meteos falls into the back line. Is something, but he cannot find the target. Knocked in the air, shut down yet again. A 2 for 0 for Liquid. It's going to be the revive stopping soon for Impact, but even still another clean battle without casualties. The early flash get away. Cody Sun knew better than to wait around a Galio as the turret falls and Liquid are not to be stopped. Yeah, they have the Ocean Dragon. They can regen up. They're going to keep going. Oh, they find the stun after he's got a flash get away. More summoners lost by 100 Thieves. This could potentially be them going to Baron. I mean, they have the Ocean. They have Arcana to heal them up in this situation, and they're going to go straight onto it. This could be a little bit risky. We'll see if 100 Thieves even feels that they can get out here on the map. They should know this is going on. If Baron's a bit tanky, there's a lot less damage during the fight, and there's no smite available for Meteos. They can burn this down as long as they respect that Ryu's coming around the wings. And here we go, 30,000 or 3,000 health left onto the Baron. Pope goes in for the double top. The knockups are there. That's one. Looking for the second. They're going to get it all. And the team is going to be routed. 100 Thieves off the map in Team Liquid. Get seven straight kills and a Baron. They get everything, winning the team fight, cleaning up three more kills afterwards, taking the Baron, and this is probably an insurmountable lead. And this is Pobelter delaying with that Zonius, being able to buy the time, immune the ultimate from Ryu, and then Impact goes straight in, stacking up that passive very quickly, hits all his spells, procs his W, pops the ultimate. The whole team is coming in. Watch this flank from Bill, it's kind of funny. DB's in behind the team, has to immediately flash all away. flash back to his team, but if you can't get on double lift, if you can't take him down immediately, there's just too much CC. And then, again, TL not risking it. They have the turn here. Impact over the wall. The taunt flash from Poe Belter. Olay there to follow it up, too. And yeah, 100 Thieves is just getting decimated with the Baron buff. Ooh. <laughs> NALCS hopeful. I'm a cutie pie. Double lift showing him a bot lane really looks like. That is an old <laughs> rivalry down there. she has got more wins than you, dude. Just saying. But this so is liquid. That's the 1v1 on stage after. Yeah, yeah, that, that'll be after the fact. That, that's the real MVP trophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll do that one at the end of the show. But yeah, Liquid on a sizable 6,000 gold lead and Baron buff still on for two minutes and change. And thunk, thunk, thunk. The cannon is still shooting down in the mid lane. Pobelts are having a pretty good time side leading against Sunday as well. Yeah, I think everyone on TL is going to be having a good time at this point in the game. Uh, it's going to be so hard for 100 Thieves to really find something. You know, all these item completions are coming through, and here comes it back. Yeah, 2v1, no fair. Someday pops his stopwatch, but he's in the middle of the people. A nice stun comes across. Will they find a good re-engage here, 100 Thieves? They maybe find something to do in the fight as the health bars get lower. Impact, the blood well's running out. Gets stopped, has to revive. Is there going to be a good re-engage? A nice flash away. Now a taunt on Vladimir. Cody Sun still wants to find the back line. Oleg and Pope would be okay targets. But now the re-engage is going to find a two-man slow. Look for the next little bit. Not going to find the engage just yet. This will be a small disengage. It's Ryu and Devlet now joining the fight as well. Once again, they go and spit the Pops his own stop on. Here comes Zola in the back line. Finds a knockoff on second charm. Galio into the mix as well. First kill going to come around as Afro is gone. 5v4 in the battle. A second kill, a third. Finally, 
one straight back on an impact, but does it even matter? The shutdown's going through for a couple. This fight getting a little bit closer. Cody Sun trying to join in, and he makes it a one versus two. Both are a little bit low, and Devil's running out of health a little as well. And not a bad defense for Hunter Thieves, but they still lost more in the fight. Yeah, they can continue pushing. Pobalter is just going to TP back. They're going to take at least an inhibitor here. Double took the mid lane tier two before he came, and this should be at least one inhib going down. Potentially, they could go for an inhibitor turret mid as well. Uh, but that may be a bit greedy as respawns are coming out. Leona is up, but 10 seconds. Anyone who else back deals off. damage. Inhibitor itself will go down. And there is the run backwards. Another great fight for Liquid. 100 Thieves, you saw they had something in them. Ooh, actually, nice by Bullets are able to, to almost grab mid. He will disengage and likely not be caught. Yeah, TL kind of botching the, the dive there on the top lane tier two. I mean, this was uh, almost all of Pobelter and Impact Health was gone to that turret, right? He actually lost his passive as well, but his double lift comes up. He had the IE completion. They know they can look for the re-engage, and they're really just waiting for the AD carry to get up here. Once double lift arrives, you see Ole looking on the side. He's going to go straight in, finds a couple, locking them up, and... Double just does so much damage at this point in the game. Unless you can take down the Zaya, you cannot win the team fight as 100 Thieves, and they're unable to do so. We see now in the picture in picture as that fight rounds down on the back end of this one. Team Liquid still maintain map control. Another Drake picked up their second mountain here. Stacking all the objective Drakes pretty easily on this. And as the reset comes in, there is the damage of champions that last fight. As you mentioned, Doublelift finally coming online. Infinity Edge now done for him as well, so he is going for that crit build after all. Yep, and he he bought a Mercurial and a, and a Hextricker on top of that. I mean, he is ridiculously strong now. It's getting harder and harder to actually burst him down. He's going to have his Flash available, his Ultimate available, and his QSS for this next fight. Yep. Which is going to make it so, so tricky for 100 Thieves to get in. And this mid lane turret is an auto or two away from going down. And as the siege maybe continues, we'll see how good the wave clear is for Hunter Thieves. Only one range champion, but Baron Buff is gone. But all they really need to do is, is wait for Impact to push in this bottom lane, wait for the Super Minions to push in top, and that's going to start to pull Hunter Thieves apart. That's going to start to open up these opportunities for Double Lift to walk forward with his rapid fire and get in a hit here or there. For 100 Thieves, it's all about one perfect fight. They have to find the engage. They have to take down Double Lift. Ooh, almost found a little bit. Ults to get away from it. No major CC to be had. A big root in the front line. They picked up Aphmoo already. Looking for the second as Medios runs, but the pillar runs away. But Ryu's going to fall. A double kill so far for Double Lift. Now into the base as a flash over the wall. Smithy is going to fall. But now the chase in. Cody's son trying to run. He's channeling and he is done. Double Lift on his third. He is legendary to Zaya. Only a single drop in the entire game. And Hibbert to fall. They're ready to go for Nexus turrets. And take down them all. Team Liquid. Running a pretty standard composition and showing up their first game of the summer split, picking up where they left off with an undefeated game against 100 Thieves. Another kill to come across. They just bounce house this poor Renekton. Someday is gonna drop. He comes back again. Still a death as he runs back towards the Nexus. I guess he'll live. The Nexus falls. It's all that matters. Team Liquid start the season well. A very strong first game here for TL. Saw so some makings of a, you know, of, of some opportunities there for 100 Thieves, but really when you run this sort of composition and you fall behind, there's such an incredible amount of crowd control for TL. And by nature, the 100 Thieves comp has to ball up to engage. It's one of those situations where it's five people all trying to dive towards the AD carry. If that is happening, well, you're all into the Galioton. You're all into the, the knockup here from Aatrox and the CC as well. Uh, from that Rakan, it becomes very, very difficult to actually get to double it. And we saw in those late game team fights, if you can't get to him, Marksmen are still incredibly strong. He put out by far the most damage and was really, you know, double have said before the game, oh, well, it's not really about 80 carries. This game was about double. Yeah, it was by the end of it all. I mean, first blood at literally level one for his opponents. I think they got two really quickly and then used that spike, of course. Uh, kind of unfortunate, Cody Sun, maybe his first game jitters did not flash either of the crowd controls coming in, but yes, very well played to Team Liquid, well played to Double If taking control of that game. There were moments where Thieves came back, mm -hmm. top lane went well for somebody, despite the fact that a single gank came in from Xmithy and burned the Renekton flash. They came back, brought people, brought the Rift Herald, first turret top lane. That Renekton started snowballing in the early game, the, there were a couple of good Drake fights as well, but mid-game rolled around, Liquid played it better. Yeah, they certainly did. And one of the kind of untold stories there was just how well Pobelter was actually laning. I mean, he had a significant CS advantage just on his own in the 1v1. Yeah. So the fact that, you know, Someday was at this really strong point. He hit two items very early on, but 
you know, as mid laner is just still on one item, you know, they weren't really all kind of hitting their power spikes at the times that they would have needed or wanted to yeah. try to really get a big fight because you have to get these early fights. You have to play around your one and two item completions when you're running these full dive teams because you do simply get outscaled by yeah. crit 80 carries by someone like the Zaya. It's, it's too hard in the later stages of the game. Yeah. And I'd also say for TL, it's, it's encouraging that Impact showed up on a non-tank and performed well because yeah, there was multiple solid. tank bans and... You know, if he can play another style for TL, it's going to mean good things for him this season. Yeah, I do think someday had maybe a slightly better time in lane than him, but yep. also he got counterpick, so some of that's forgivable. Like, mm -hmm. you played fighter, fighter with counterpick. You don't, you're not supposed to win that lane. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you can forgive a lot of anything that Impact might have been down for in that one. But now to help break down the first game of the split, let's send it back to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Freak. Avali is going to be catching up with Doublelift in just a moment to hear about their game one win of the split. But our defending champions beating the rematch defending. rivalry, defending that mm -hmm. title exactly here in game one against 100 Thieves. And, and I want to dive right into the champion picks as we saw them because it was a lot of our discussion coming into the top of the day was how would it develop here in North America? And it's very funny because we're hyping up like all the new crazy stuff that happens. And TL actually go back to a very old comp that's been around for a mm -hmm. year plus with the Camille Galio combination, locking people down, comboing that together with Zaya Rakan, which is something that's still seen a little bit in the current meta. The one new adaptation that has started to see a lot of prevalence is that Aatrox in the top lane. Yeah, and it's still just a top lane priority pick plus a tremendous engage combo. Yep. And this is a game that I feel like challenged a little bit about how well you can play your champion, mm. right? How comfortable can you be on these picks? Because I actually think from a theory perspective, I like 100 Thieves draft yep. because the Camille Gallio specifically is used to pick off squishy damage dealers, get rid of the tools and the cannons in the back of the team composition with his unstoppable engage and then winning the fight. But you look at 100 Thieves team comp and there's actually no one that makes perfect sense to dive onto, but therefore... Team Liquid just has to play better, right? They were always the ones finding the initiations. I did not think like Hunter Thieves was particularly good at Aurelia or Vladimir and missed a lot of spells in team fights. And Team Liquid completely outplayed them. Yeah, the team fights to come, but I do want to talk about the laning phase and how these lanes interact. Because once again, we've got a Vlad and a Leona against a Zyra Khan. So traditional bot lane against new bot lane. Mark, break it down for us. <laughs> so a lot of the... <laughs> oh, he's dead. Yeah. I mean, this is this is not anything new. Like, a lot of people see all the crazy stuff happening, but it's the same stuff that's been in the game forever. You need to understand level two for the enemy team. Back off. Everyone's been dying to Leona level two all in forever. It happens again here, but this time with Rakan. Yeah. But this is what it's supposed to do. And then now, once you're level six and seven, boom. That's the burst of the combo. I think the Vladimir had an Embassy Large Rod at that point, so right. it's a huge amount of burst with Leona. That's the fear of both ends. So you could see, I think, a small level of unfamiliarity with both sides. The Vladimir not having heal, disrespecting level two, which even if you have heal, you need to respect the level back, two. Back the heck off. Yeah, and it's about kind of like why these bot lane mages and bruisers start showing up is because they spike harder on one item. You know, like you saw double of QSS, a BF sword, a pickaxe, and like a lot of random stuff. Whereas like mm -hmm. you can go Spellbinder, Protobelt, or um, the Oblivion Orb or something for double pen right. on the Vladimir right away and start all inning at six like you saw, but you need to get there first. And the fact that they couldn't execute on that part of the laning phase put them behind from then on. Now I want to return to the point you were making earlier about the way that these team comps interact right. in the team fight phase. Team Liquid wanting to zero somebody out, uh, but who exactly do you target on this 100 Thieves team? Right, this time they're actually targeting uh, Leona who has the W armor and MR up. Uh, then still able to proc Aftershock later in the fight. They spend so much time trying to chase after the Leona, but they, they forget about the rest of the fight and any of the actual four damage dealers that are on 100 Thieves. This is the type of fight that 100 Thieves would be much more okay with, where they actually are grouped at the start and can kind of dissuade the initiation or absorb it, so to speak, with some of their bruisers. But even in that fight, you see Someday missing his E over the wall. You see Cody's son not necessarily playing it that cleanly. Uh, a little bit of misplay, whereas Team Liquid really played with comfort and I think proved that you still can do a lot of these things. 27,000 damage, 80 carry, it's like MSI. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even though the meta is basically broken open, like Vladimir, Aurelia, Renekton, those are all way more quote unquote meta that you see in international play in Korea and the LPL and things like that. But you can just play what you're good at right now. And that's kind of proven by Double If you're like, let's just play Zyrakon. Like we don't need to go anything crazy. This is still strong enough to win games. And I think that's what's super cool about the meta right now is 
You should play to your team's strengths, not just the meta. And the game just cresting that 30 minute mark, Jeff. That's kind of where we finally saw the Zaya pick come to fruition. Once that infinity edge is completed, all that true damage, all of a sudden you can eat through those four bruisers yep. on the opposing team. And so by all means, 80 carries are marksmen are still alive in that position. And so then it does come down to a question of if you're building a team comp, do you index towards a player's strengths on these specific types of champions? Yes. Or do you try, <laughs> right? Or do you try and yeah. follow the meta of metas as decided by other regions? Yeah, uh, it totally depends on the team. And it, it's not always about the team composition. I think contrary to popular belief, you go back a year ago, the things that would make a champion useless or overpowered are actually things like 5 AD or 20 seconds on the cooldown of a spell. Right. Right? Like how well you play a champion is so much more important than the 5 AD that is there. So I do think that crit carries generally turn on too late right now. Okay. So I think if you're perfect, you're going to be playing the Vladimirs. But Doublelift was playing the perfect Rakan. Cody Sun was not playing the perfect Vladimir. Doublelift was much better. There you have it. The defending champs pick up their first win of the split. To hear more about that game, let's send it over to Avli and Team Liquid's bot laner. Zaya. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Doublelift. And would you look at that? You moved from Travis Gafford's couch to mine. Congratulations what on a your... What Congratulations <laughs> on your victory. I'm going to ask you questions about the game now, okay? Um, this was actually kind of like a rematch for 100 Thieves against you guys since this was the spring finals game. Uh, were you expecting them to come in hot against you? Um, I was expect like the the meta is really wild right now. I'm sure that's what everyone's talking about. So I was expecting you know them to come out swinging and and really just show their like crazy strat because this is like a rematch of the finals. Um, you can tell it's crazy because Dash referenced. Uh, let's bring it over to Team Liquid's bot laner, not AD carry. So it's like it's really it's really nuts now. Um, you can play pretty much anything in any role like support mid laners. Faker's playing Taric, um, like. Previously, tank junglers were, and then now they're switching and playing like mastery and getting 200 CS in 10 minutes. So, I think this match, like I, I, I didn't really know what to expect. I just knew like I was really confident in the in the bottom matchup. So, um, it ended up doing pretty good. I got first blood at like two minutes. That was nice. <laughs> well, I spoke with Kane before the game, and he said that you guys felt prepared coming in but that when it came to the men and everything, he still didn't really know what to expect. So what's it like kind of preparing for these games? Uh, I don't think there's any way you can prepare for a team other than kind of looking at their solo queue because it indicates like this is what they're investing some time into. And even then it's like um, you can have players who invest a lot of time into stuff and they find out that it doesn't actually work out well in, in like scrims or the, at the end of the week, they're like, oh, you know what? That was like... I played like 10 games of Heimerdinger, but like it's just not good or it is good. Um, so preparation wise, we just kind of focus on ourselves. I think like our team, we we don't really care what the other teams are doing that much in the end. We just want to know like what works for our team. And, uh, you know, what works for our team sometimes is just like having a bunch of CC champions and, uh, and an AD carry. And sometimes it won't be that. So without asking you to reveal too many of your secrets, we did see you on the traditional bot lane champ, Zaya. Um, will we see you experiment with anything else in the bot lane in the future? Yeah, I've been super experimental um, with bot lane because I think it's really cool that you can be creative. And uh, I'm like, I'm still struggling to find like a way to be just like relevant in every game and, and just try to like have a really high game impact. But, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll stumble across something that I think is really cool and then uh, we put a lot of time into it as a team, and then, you know, my teammates give me feedback back and forth. So I think I'm ready to bust out some crazy stuff. And in the first game, you know, we didn't have to, which was a really big relief. But in the, like, next few games, I think, uh, you know, you're going to see some really insane stuff. Ooh, I'm excited. Uh, you guys actually only got a little bit of a break before the start of the summer split because you came back from MSI. So how was that entire experience, and what did you really learn from it? Well... Yeah, the, the MSI experience was was not what I expected. I came in, I was like, I'm going to get stomped. And then, um, you know, I, I was really kind of fearful of that. And then I, I went on stage and I think, I guess, just because I had such low expectations of myself, I was able to kind of like uh, just play at my usual level. And then I was surprised at like, oh, I guess my like usual level is is good enough. And and then I, I come, come back to NA, I said something along the lines of like, oh, you know, I'm going from Uzi and Betty and Prey world class like best 80 carries in their region and stuff to back going back to playing against like sneaky but now even sneaky's not here so it's like now i'm just going back to playing against like keith and cody son and and players i think um 
you know, they're definitely strong for North America, but and and you know, their their teams are super strong and well put together, but uh there's just it's just a different level, I think. And I learned a lot from MSI and I think I can definitely just like I don't know. It's I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but it's going to be um, you know, it's like the only, my only real enemy is myself. What were your personal thoughts on the whole Cloud9 swaparoo? Wow. Wow. Just yeah, wow. Just wow. Um, yeah, I mean, Golden Glue and Keith. Now, did you have or do you have any kind of personal goals coming into this summer split, either for yourself or for the team? You've been here a while. Is MVP kind of on the horizon for you? Dude, everyone always says that every split. I never get it. It sucks. Uh, I just... Whatever, dude. I just get, I gave up on MVP and when Rush took it from me in season five, like, are you serious? That was insane. I was, every time I think I'm playing super well and then I don't get MVP, I'm just like, man, whatever. I like lose my interest in it. Okay, well, fingers crossed for you for the rest of the split, but congratulations again on your victory. And for everyone else, stick around because after our quick commercial, we're going to see TSM take on CLG. All of his, his kind of threat as we're gonna see them go in. And pretty good damage there. He's always and gonna die right away! Level one! Now Sonya's in the front line. First kill comes over to Impact. That's a one for zero for Team Liquid. Now the re-engage as Impact runs away. He can revive if he needs to. But the Aurelia kill in the mid lane is a one for one. Hope goes in for the double top. The knockups are there. That's one. Looking for the second. They're gonna get it all. Leon is tonight. I'm going next. I'm going next. I'm looking at the I'm looking at the like the We can end. Team Liquid start the season well. Welcome back to Assist of the Week. On day five of MSI during Fnatic and King Zone Dragon X, Hillisang caught Gorilla and Prey with his ultimate. This gave Fnatic a chance to go all in on the Frozen duo, which resulted in a two for one trade. With his life, the Ignite is ticking down. Here comes a heroic entrance, and Gorilla escapes with his life. Caps gets one oh! for two. Oh, Caps is Yasuo is beautiful.